Welcome everyone at Marvin's Guide to User-Friendly Drupal Backend. Um, quick show of hands, who uses Drupal for their profession as a job? Are there any backend developers? Maybe frontend developers? Site builders maybe? Is there anyone that actually uses the products these guys deliver as, as a marketeer or as a content writer, creator? No one. <laughs> well, do you guys remember your first day doing Drupal? Was it easy to do? No, was no. it something you got along with quickly or was it something you had to really try your best uh, to figure out what checkbox did what and what the purpose of things was? Did you have to go to a lot of documentation? Could you find it? I want you to meet Floor and Dan. Floor is a whale. And she just got hired to be a marketeer on a brand new Drupal 8 website. And she's very excited. She hasn't done anything like this before. And her job is to do marketing, basically. She gets the right content to convert the clients and get the KPI straight. Marketing bingo, check. <laughs> and now, that's the second one, he's a ball of petunias. He has some experience. He used to be a, a marketeer in Drupal 7 and he's going to help Floor with the same job. And this is the next screen will be a movie of their first day and how it went. Whoa, what's happening? Who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose in life? What do I mean by who am I? Okay, okay, calm down, calm down, get a grip now. Ooh, this is an interesting sensation. What is it? It's a sort of a tingling in my... Well, I suppose I better start finding names for things. Let's call it a uh, tail. Yeah, tail. And hey, what's this roaring sound? Whooshing past what I'm suddenly going to call my head. Wind. Is that a good name? It'll do. Yeah. I'm dizzy with anticipation. Or is it the wind? There's an awful lot of that now, isn't it? And what's this thing coming towards me very fast? So big and flat and round, it needs a big, wide-sounding name like Ow! Ound! Round! Ground! That's it! Ground! Ha! I wonder if it'll be friends with me. Hello, ground! Curiously, the only thing that went through the mind of the bowl of petunias as it fell was... Oh, no, no not again. And well, Drupal finds its ways to beat you in the face or throw yourself to the ground and then you get up and you try again and it'll beat you in the face again and it keeps on going. And it's really not that bad because we can handle some of that stuff, but the other CMSs on the market do everything else wrong, but the usability part, they kind of do good or perhaps better than Drupal. My name is Steven van der Hout. I'm a Drupal developer at Calibrate. I've been working there since 2009. That's back when, uh, when, when Drupal 6 was there. And at Calibrate, we take great pride in delivering projects uh, with a great usability, not just for the end visitor of the website, but also for the content editors and the webmasters that are using the features we build. And this is Marvin. Marvin is a robot and he's originally built as a prototype uh, of robots with general people personalities. He's kind of a failed prototype because he's uh, affected with severe depression and boredom. That's basically because the core he drives on is not that good uh, when it comes to user experience. So we're going to try to make Marvin a little bit more happy. Uh, and I'm going to show you some configuration and some little snippets of code which can help the Drupal backend and this Marvin's life to be a bit better. Uh, I will show some configuration. There will be a couple of code snippets which are available at GitHub. Uh, the UX module here, you can plug and play enable it on your website, but it's not really intended to be plug and play for every Drupal purpose. The, the goal is to have a starting, pro starting point that you can use and uh, really tailor the backends to meet your project and to meet your client's needs. Uh, but uh, the tools I discussed now are there. The beginning, in the beginning, the universe was created. This made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. They should have just kept it simple. You know why this picture of Marvin works so well? It's because it's so minimalistic. There's nothing that there that needs to be just the eyes that people know that the robot we're talking about and it works really well because there's nothing that 
Turkish youth to write content more than an empty sheet of paper. We've all doodled something on an empty paper laying around. It's really sex that's hidden. It's in, it's in the core of the human being to want, want to write something on a piece that's empty. So what I tell people to do when they want to improve a backend or any experience, get rid of all the clutter, of all the clutter that's on the page. If it's not there for the for ninety percent of the use case, uh, the editor wants to use it. Get rid of it. Focus on consistency so that an admin overview page for content looks pretty much the same as it does for media. Make sure that your node pages are exactly the same, the order of the fields are the same for every content type. And focus on the experience. Sometimes uh, Drupal finds its way to make multiple paths to the same task possible. Uh, on the admin views, there's uh, action drop down at the top and at the bottom, which is really convenient when you're in the bottom of the page, but that's not, not really the experience people want. That's too much clutter, just one box is enough and they will find a way to the top of the page again. Something I think everyone uses is the admin toolbar and that's on every page your client visits on the site. So try to keep that as minimalistic as possible. Remove everything that's not really necessary there. Drupal makes it hard sometimes because the permissions are not always fine-grained and sometimes you need to write some stuff to make Sure, some pages uh, don't show up in the admin toolbar, um, but usually when the site editor has a toolbar, this is pretty much what he sees. He has a tab for the content and tab for structure where he can uh, arrange the menus and do web forms. And a webmaster has some more tasks he can do. He can also manage other users on the website. And in this case, he can also do redirects so that he can fix four or four pages uh, and follow up on that. And by default, uh, the URL redirects and the URL aliases are in the configuration menu, which as a, as a module developer seems okay because that's where you're configuring that stuff. But for the webmaster, that structure, it's just structure on his website and he doesn't need to have an additional configuration tab at the top of the menu. So what I did is I rearranged the menu, I created the custom menu item as a, as a holder, as a parent type in the menu bar for these three other paths. So that is in the structure, so it's clear for him what he's doing, that there's not a button too much. I also disabled the add redirect button because there was no add redirect at URL aliases and I wanted to keep that consistent. You could also add the menu item to add aliases, depends on the project and how many time you will spend there. The second thing most content editors see a lot is a content overview page and all the other admin dashboards that are there. Depending on the size of the project and the, the number of editors that are working on it, I always, always create custom dashboards so that they can see the content they need. But when you look at the standard Drupal page, it looks like this, which for me is way too cluttered. It's not called, you have the, the, the filters at the top, which nobody of not everybody uses all the time because most of the time the content they're working on will be on top of the list and if it's somewhere hidden inside Drupal it's probably easier to use a front-end search to get to the page instead of going this way and then you have the actions always uh, available which they do not use all the time so I try to make that more clean <coughs> by, by default collapsing all the filters in a, in a detailed tab I also removed the uh, the action drop down that was there, uh, it will only show when you click on a uh, select button, it's not really visible, but it's there. And how I did that uh, is using better exposed filters to collapse the, the field set of the, the exposed filters. You can use uh, better exposed filters in views, and every exposed filter inside your view has an option to be a secondary option. That's actually used so that you can uh, provide the, the search box with advanced option at the bottom. But for the admin views, I always disable them. Uh, I put every field as a secondary option, so it's collapsed by default, like that. This is what the page looks like, so I enable the secondary form options. That's one option you have to tick, and then I rename it to filters. I enable auto-submit, but exclude the text field, and then I hide the submit button. And after you hit the uh, secondary option, then every 
the exposed filter will have a, a checkbox that says this is a secondary option to make it colored in the front end or in the front end overview. This is how the bulk operations work. So it only appears when you effectively, effectively want to do something. Uh, you can't do that just by configuring, so there's a small piece of code that uh, I use for that. You see at the top there are uh, five prompts I'm doing this for, I look through them, and then I just uh, exchange the title so it says which selected, it's more clear. Then I add a configure inline uh, wrapper on the element so that it's displayed inline, and then I use forward stage just to make it visible only when you uh, check one checkbox and then it will pop up. And the uh, action here, uh, I remove access on the bottom drop down because it doesn't really need to be there. And I do the same for all other admin views. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can create custom ones, but by default it's the people admin view, it's the, uh, the media admin view, and I make sure that the filters are collapsed everywhere. But I also did, I didn't mention yet, is on the default content overview, I also add an image everywhere. It's to, to make it more, more consistent with how media looks, but it's also a better experience for an editor. It's more recognizable which content they're going to be working on if there's an image beside it. But you should really see uh, what your project needs and how you will configure that. This is the people's view, it's all also the same. And then the note form itself. This is where people are writing content, so you want to be you want that to be as minimalistic as possible. And you could write the fancy React front end to do that, that would be probably the best solution, but it would be the most work. And what I try to do is just rearrange the fields so that it's it's a more consistent feel and it's more visually appealing. Uh, and then we're using a uh, Entity browser so people can upload images by dragging them into the field and then write the alt text and do the focal point at the same place where they're uploading it. Uh, since Drupal 8.6, there's an image browser in core which is similar to what Entity Browser does, it just isn't there yet functionality wise, so we're still using the Entity Browser setup, but it will improve hopefully in future. Modules are used for cleaning up node forms or field groups. Uh, most people know that, like, and you can use that to provide fields in a horizontal tab layout. I use max length so that the teaser text can only have 260 characters. Uh, allowed format to move the, remove the, the drop down to select the format and then entity browser is used for, for media selection or selecting documents or any entity reference that needs it. I also use form modes a lot. Uh, I'm not going in too deep on that, but what I usually do when it comes to paragraphs, I create a simple and an advanced form mode, so that depending on the context, if it's nested in another paragraph or if it's on a, a news page or something, then there are no layout options available. Just keep all the options away when they're not necessary for the case. So what I also like to do is move stuff away to the sidebar. It's not that hard. Uh, and what, I, what you see here is I'm using the field group to provide horizontal tabs at the, at the top uh, and make sure that the content where they're writing on is immediately there and every other field that doesn't need to be changed all, at, all the time is in a separate tab where it's logical. So you can just use field group and create the tab and then put uh, the fields inside it. Max length and allowed format formatters. So you see at the editor that there's no help guidelines at the bottom. There's no drop down to select another filter format. And at the top there's a message saying you can only use 260 characters. And when you're typing, it will count down so that you show it just the way the filter does. And then when those modules are enabled, you can go to the form page and then just Say the two widgets that it needs to hide the text format guidelines and the help text because the help text is good the first time, but it's cluttering the view in the, all the other times, and a countdown message can be set there as well. 
The entity browser, this is how you configure it. The configuration of the entity browser is a little bit cumbersome and it's not that clear when you first install it. That's why I see people struggling to use it. But if you know the basic steps it uses, uh, it gets pretty easy to do. Um, the most important part is the configuring the widgets themselves. So we'll get there. So you can add multiple widgets. Here there's one which has a view, which allows you to select uh, existing entities. And there's another one to upload your images with drop zone. And it uses inline entity form so that it opens up the media form immediately after uploading it. So you can write the alt text into the focal point directly while you're uploading it. So you can, to get to know how entity browser uh, works is there are four four pieces that you need to know what they do. The first one is the plugin. That's how it's going to be shown in the form. It can be a form immediately using an iframe or it can be a model. Then the second one is how you will switch between the different widgets. That's a tab by default, but you can also use a select box or say, I don't just want one and don't enable one. And then there's the selection display plugin. That's the most confusing one. That's used when you want to add content from different widgets. Say you want to upload two files and select four from a view, then you can add them in a selection display, which kind of is a shopping cart that you can use to keep your entities you're going to reference while you're working on it and then add them at one time. That has its use case, but for, for media selecting, I think it's a bit too much, so I, only, I always disable it for a media. And this is how the, the widget cells are configured. If you're adding modules like inline entity form, they provide widgets you can use to do the same. Uh, the above one is by default there. It allows you to create a new view, which has a specific display it's using. And you can then just create any view you want. You can add CSS to it or a grid to work with exposed filters. So if you're tagging images, you can select a drop down and, and choose to what you're, you're searching for. And then the other one to upload it is based on uh, inline entity browser and drop zone ES, which allows you to drag and drop the images placed in the update uh, text. What I've mentioned is moving fields to the sidebar. Um, in this case, there was a uh, responsible for the content that people were writing. They didn't really write the text themselves or the editor that had to put it in the website. And it was important for them to know who wrote the piece of content so they could contact him if they had questions. So I've moved it to the sidebar because it's meta information about the content, but not really something that's shown in the backend or in the frontend. Uh, what you saw here is by default Drupal content moderation states are at the bottom, which is okay because it makes sure that you're not forgetting to update the states when you're pressing submit. By some projects I keep it at the bottom, but and the other, it, it makes the content go dancing a little bit. It's not visually appealing. So I tend to move it to the sidebar as well, because once something is published and you're going to change it, then it can be a draft and it's not live, you will see it. It makes the page, to me, at least it's more visually appealing. To move fields to the sidebar, uh, if you want to like the, the content moderation to be on top, and you move it in a piece of code in a form author or something to the meta group, which will keep it at the top of the sidebar. And if you want to have an image in the sidebar, for example, I extend the entity reference browser widget so that it is placed in the advanced group and that makes it appear on the, in the settings part of the, the content. Where I think uh, a great usability win can be made is the, is the menu pages in Drupal, because by default they look like this. In my opinion, there's too much help just text cluttering the page, uh, and there are a lot of options people hardly use here. You don't want to select the parent, you probably rearrange it in the page just before this. Uh, so what I always do is clean it up in a form alter, and then I make it look something like this which is just two fields and they open up in a model which makes it experience-wise way better than what it used to be. And it's actually pretty easy to do. So this piece of code looks through the fields that uh, should no longer be enabled or should no longer be visible uh, for the expanded 
I make sure it's checked by default so it opens up in the, in the hover menu. And then in the, uh, the local action, that's the, the button on top to add a new menu item, I do, uh, I just, that's, it's something that Drupal does really good. Once you put the data dialog type on any link, you do the attribute, then and you name it model or settings tray, then it will automatically open that link up inside a model or inside the settings tray when you're in the front end. So I just edit the, the data dialog type and then I use the use IX class so that it knows I need to open this, this link in, inside of a model, which is just a couple lines of code for a really good result. The, the downside is on, on menu pages, you have the button on top and then there's also the drop down link list from views on the, on the right side of the link. You need to alter that in a separate form alter, but <laughs> it pretty much is the same. And it works great for menu items, but it also works great for taxonomy terms, because a lot of terms are just a name, and if you add an additional field, then there's still room left, so you can add a drop down or anything else there. And the code is really simple. So there are some small stuff I do, so as a recap, I make sure that uh, the menus themselves are clean, that there doesn't isn't standing anything that doesn't really need to be there, keep it as simple as possible. Uh, I'm trying to make the admin overviews as consistent as possible and remove all the fields that are supposed to be there for every case. And then I try to make the note edit page uh, as minimalistic as possible, keep them visually attractive so that people have a clean sheet to start writing content. In. And menu items can be improved, uh, taxonomy term as well, just by adding a model to it. So, I've mentioned it before, get rid of clutter, focus on consistency and think about the experience you're trying to have. And then we can make Marvin's life a little bit better and can have pan-galactic cargo blasters at the restaurant at the end of the universe or at the social night calibrate sponsoring at the end of the evening. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, that's back. <laughs> Experience is that some of our customers have issues with the content page. Uh, they, they see the drop down, and they see add content and add content of some types, but they don't know how to go to the content page. Do you have any recommendations on what to do there? Yeah. So the question is. Uh the default menu has uh, the content at the top and then there's media up below and add content, but there's no real clickable link uh, that's clear that they can use to go to the content page themselves. So what I usually do is I just create a custom link in the administration menu, which is at the correct place. And then there's pages, media and forms sometimes. Uh, and then they just know if I want to add content, I click there and then you can add, click the pages button itself. Uh, I, when there's a lot of content types or when it's useful for editors, I always I create other groups inside of the, the add content links, but it's not just all the content types at one place, but it's a little bit more split up. Um, one more thing, uh, our boss is a big fan of paragraphs. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have, I think it's, it's, it's uh, great thing, but um, in the back end, it sometimes gets messy. The question is, paragraph gets messy, uh, how do I solve it? I, I, what I start off doing is creating a simple and advanced form mode so that you can have different fields shown depending on the context. So if you're using paragraph uh, layout, which then in themselves have different options that are nested inside, they probably don't need to have uh, a select box to, to, to choose the background color. So then the, the nested paragraphs they have specific form mode which you can use. Uh, 
I always use field sets to collapse everything that's not really there. So one of the downsides of paragraphs is if you're writing content in one paragraph and you then want to make it another, if you're writing content in a text paragraph and you want to add an image, you're pretty much stuck. So we have a, a paragraph called text boot image and the, the image is collapsed so they can edit if they want. The layout options are all collapsed in a field set so there's only a text field visible and if they want to do additional configuration they can just open up the configuration field set. Uh, another thing that works really well is using Paragraph Browser. I tended to talk about it, it's still here. And uh, I didn't want to go too deep into Paragraphs because they get messy really fast, but when you're using Paragraph bar Browser, it's just a, a widget that you allows you to select it from a, a better drop-down than the, the default select box that gets you there. And if you add uh, an icon that shows pretty much what they're doing, that it's usually more appealing to the, to the client. So. Yeah. Can I add a, a, a recommendation to that? Mm -hmm. There is a module, and I'm sorry I forgot what the exact name is, there is a module that allows you to edit a paragraph, a single paragraph, a standalone page. Mm -hmm. And um, we have lots of pages. Um, editors love that. Yeah. So yeah, you can click one of the conditional uh, links, or, or what is it? Uh, contextual. Contextual link, and you can just add it to one paragraph and yeah. then get back to the first one. Yeah, I know that's uh, something I've been playing around with. Uh, you can edit them from the front end. The Gazer module does that by uh, adding buttons on top of every piece of content, which is a, a really good concept. Uh, I wasn't really sure on, really, I didn't find the way they were doing the, the, the setting straight stuff and then the models that we're using. Uh, and then I started figuring out what I could do with just default Drupal core. And that's where the, the paragraph front end UI module Initially, it got, got created. Uh, that's something I'm, I'm building myself. I spent some time at Drupal Camp, of Drupal Dev Days. We're working on a release for that. And I have a dev release which, which works. But I'm not using it myself because there are some issues with the settings tray uh, and permissions and the way the, the edge model all works, which makes it, for me, not sure if I'm using it for production websites. But you have Geyser. Uh, which does have a stable release, and then the thing I was working on called Paragraph Frontend UI, which pretty do pretty much do the same thing. I think I used another one, but I'm not sure. Yeah, there, there, there will probably be other people doing Okay, uh, if anyone has any other questions, you can just ask, my, ask them later, or you'll see me hanging around somewhere. Thank you for listening.